I'm Tim Seelig, the Artistic Director of the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus, here with Chris Verdugo, the Executive Director, and it is our distinct honor and privilege today to have um, behind the curtain uh, a hero, a role model, someone who has, has walked the walk more than most that I know. Terrence Kelly is the Artistic Director, Conductor, Leader, of the Oakland Interfaith Gospel Choir and all of its tributaries. He's been the director for 35 years. Some say it's 36, actually, he couldn't remember. And he wanted the audience, the studio audience, to know that he was eight when he began. So um, please welcome a 43-year-old. <laughs> Hello, Tim. It's so good to be here with you guys. Um, you know how I feel about SFGMC. I love you guys. Terrence, um, our audience will be watching this on, on Thursday. It will be the Thursday. And um, no doubt we will still be in the middle of the current situation that we're in. We, Chris and I, uh, are eager, as will our listenership be, to hear your words, words of wisdom, words from your heart, and we know that no one like you can, can share this. So I'm going to just open the floor to, for you to start with, where are you today? Oh, man, it, it, it goes more, um, where are you this hour? You know, it's, um, it's, it started, you know, well, it's been going on my whole life, you know. Um, let me go to the election of President Obama. I talked to my son who was not a father yet and i said after after this you will not have to have the talk my son called me the other day and said dad i'm gonna have to have the talk because he has a 12 year old and and i mean i was on the floor for about an hour after that you know it's you know, it, it hit me in a whole different way um to hear him say already at 12 he's starting to fear for his son um and so that's where, where some, some of where I am today is just thinking about my two, three grandsons. Um, wow, they're still, you know, I, I didn't think I would have to worry about them driving their cars or being in a park. Um, but it's, um, this is this country's history. This country was built on the back of slaves and um, um, we were told that we weren't human and and it's still being played out today that there's no humanity in how we can be treated. I won't say that we are treated, but there's no humanity in how we can be treated. Um, the biggest part of this year started for me with um, Ahmad Arbery. I have never in my life, oh boy, seen a person hunted, a person hunted. Um, I, I cried so hard that um, my partner told me, <laughs> you're going to make yourself sick. I've never seen a person hunted. And that has haunted me. I have not slept well since then. Um, that's the most terrible thing I've ever seen in my life. And I mean, I've seen some bad things. I grew up in the ghetto. I grew up in the uh, projects in, in, in West Oakland. I've seen a lot, I grew up around a lot, but I've never seen a human being hunted. And um, I think that was one of the most terrible moments of my life. Uh, the song that we sang on tour with SFG, see Lord How Come Me Here, is just as relevant today as it was when, when the first Negro woman started to sing that song, when she first uttered those words, or when they were first written, they're still, um, relevant today and, and it's it's a terrible it's a terrible time and then for me who have brothers like you and brothers like Chris and I know your hearts and I know this is a terrible time for you you are great sympathizers and great empathizers and um, you, uh, you are my brother so <laughs> you know how, what, how, how does this feel for you when you know that um, black people are walking past you on the street and hating you and you had nothing to do with it. As I direct and manage through with an interfaith choir who is um, 
55% white, 28% um, African American, and the rest is other. Um, you know, I'm so glad that we know we love each other. That's that's the one thing that has never been doubted in our organization. So there's no rift there. There's no there's no mistrust in the choir, and I don't feel like I'll I need to have any mistrust in SFGMC. That's my family, and and I don't. It's it's just it's just terrible. <laughs> you, you know it's. It's so, so many ways, you know, that you can look at it. I, I don't agree with the looting and all of the riots. I agree with peaceful protests, but I understand it. Yeah. When you feel you have no voice, when you feel you have nothing else to do, you're going to react. And um, the disinterest in all of it from 45 you know, um, other than straight military action, the disinterest is just frightening. You mean the disinterest other than standing there with a can of lighter fluid, <laughs> uh, stoking, stoking the flames. Um, I, I want to ask you, I, I'm assuming you all did not have church yesterday. No. Well, we have online service. Yeah, yeah, but not, not gathering. No. Uh, I'm no. not there around people. <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, have you met with your uh, with OIGC? Have you met with them via Zoom since all this happened? Oh, we, we're still having choir rehearsal every Monday night. And we have a section of choir rehear rehearsal, which is, it was set up, set aside for Corona conversation. Now it's, right. set, you know, set aside for all the conversations. Yeah, but you'll have that tonight. Oh, yeah. And I don't know how much singing we'll actually do tonight. Tonight is definitely going to be about healing and being being in contact, connection with one another. We have been placed, as you said, in the most difficult of all situations. Of uh, it's a lose lose, uh, where where our relationship is concerned and the relationship between SFGMC, SFGMC and OIGC is it, it up to now. It's just been a win win, and it will be. Again. But I, I can speak for Chris and for me and, uh, and all of the members of the course. We don't know what to say. And we, when we say something, so often good intentions go awry because we want to say the right thing, but there is no right thing to say. Can you help us, me? Um, I'm with you. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's a good thing to say. I'm with you. You know, um, the thing the thing that really, I think, frustrates um, um, black and brown people the most is when people that are not black or brown says, I understand. No. Don't say that. <laughs> no. but, but if you say, I'm with you, because there's, there's also always been sympathizers and empathizers and brothers and sisters of different colors that walked with us. But, you know, there's, and it's like at my church, my church is 95, 94% black, but we have a few white members who say, because my church, we speak frankly, we talk about black issues in my church. And even on Zoom, you know, I had one of our white brothers said, I'm so sorry. I wish I could do more. I can only do what I can do. And, um, you know, one of the response that came in through the chat was, you are with us. Yeah. If you're with us, that's all we're asking. But we're also asking for our white brothers and sisters to say enough is enough. Stop it. Not just be with us, but be more proactive with us. And not just, um, I empathize, I, uh, step in with us. Yeah, I want to bring, uh, I want to bring uh, Chris, I want you to come in with us uh, and talk about a time when we were together and we walked the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Uh, Thank you. Which is really your bridge, yeah. and not our bridge. So, Chris, tell us about that for you, and then uh, Terrence can respond. Thank you, Tim. I've been quiet because I really am holding in a lot of emotion. Um, there's something you said, Terrence, that I want to go back to really quickly, and um, that is, don't say you understand. Right? Um, 
over this past weekend, um, I think I have repressed a lot of, you know, a lot of my experience growing up as a gay Latino boy, um, a brown boy. And when I was about 18 years old, I had a white affluent boyfriend and I lived with him. And I'll never forget um, multiple incidents of driving, you know, through Coral Gables, Florida, to his house and being followed by police, being stopped by police. Um, and the fear that for so many years I held on to because that was my experience as a young person um, and, and into my goodness, you know, I, I think there's still some of that, you know, when I see a police officer behind me. Um, and that isn't something I've spoken about ever. Um, but this is the moment, right, to, to, to share those experiences and, and, you know, to say I'm with you and I have been there. I, 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 I it, it is, um, you don't understand until you're there. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so thank you for uh, saying that. Thank you for opening that and letting me share that. One of the most, uh, I think one of the most incredible moments in my life during the Lavender Pen Tour in the South, um, and that was captured in the documentary Gay Chorus Deep South, is when uh, you know, Valeria and I are arm in arm um, walking across the Edmund Pettus Bridge and um, I, I just remember neither of us spoke. We just had tears as we walked over that bridge. And, and as Tim said, um, that is, you know, that is your bridge. Uh, uh, and my experience was so incredibly profound. Uh, but I'd love to hear what that meant for you, what that meant to the African American members of the chorus. Um, yeah, what, what did that mean? And what does it mean now? Oh, wow. That was such a wonderful moment um, to be on the Pettus Bridge. But let me let me just say something from my standpoint. I, I don't see it as our bridge. Most African-Americans would say it's our bridge. We don't want the whole bridge. We just want to share it. We just want to be able to cross it without a problem. Good point. Good point. <laughs> so that's really the angst of it all. You know, we just want to part. We want to be here. We want to be seen. When I walk in the store, I don't want to be um, looked at. I want to be seen. I don't, I don't need to be followed the whole time. You know, I have um, gone to a store and been followed. I'm, I'm going to go back to what you were saying about Pettus Bridge, but I was followed in a, um, in a Sears one day. And, um, the guard was just following me and following me. And then the lady came over in, in the suit department and she says, oh, well, these suits are almost like these, but they're $200 cheaper. Hmm. So I go and I get a black one, I get a gray one, I get, a, uh, uh, I get like four suits. I get out, walk them over and put them, put them on a thing and I slap my credit card on the more expensive suits. I said, okay, thank you. She said, you didn't even try them on. I said, just, just, and she ran them. And I said, now. Take them off. <laughs> I'm not buying anything in this store. <laughs> yes. I, was, I was like, I love that story. <laughs> I was like, how dare you? Yeah. Yeah. Just because I have on blue jeans and a t shirt and a baseball cap, how dare you? And she was like, well, I didn't mean, I said, yes, you did. So, but, you know, so we just, I just want to go into Sears and be left alone. But that's a whole nother story. We'll talk about that again. But Pettis I, Bridge. I get that too. I get it too. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a little surprised, Terrence, that you would have gone to Sears to buy suits. I've never <laughs> seen you in a ago. suit, period. But <laughs> Well, as, as, well as, you know, there are some suits that you buy just to wear on stage. That's the ones that, yeah. <laughs> So, but um, Pettus Bridge, um, I've read about it, wanted to go my whole life. When my high school went um, to the Southern tour to go to Pettus Bridge and all that, I couldn't go because the choir went somewhere else. So I'd never, got, never actually been there. So it was a moment um, of reckoning, a moment of homecoming, a moment of idol connection, because you know, every little black boy worships 
well, my age anyway, worshiped, worships Dr. King. So, you know, you, you, I'm on the bridge and I'm singing, but then it comes to me that, I'm, that this is when I think, um, Tim, you walked past me and I was like bawling. Um, uh, I'm on the bridge with my whole OIGC family and my whole SFGMC family, and we're all doing this thing together. That was, you know, that was one of the most amazing moments of my life, other than being in Brown Chapel. Right. And yeah. I could, you remember, I could hardly talk in Brown Chapel. <laughs> oh, sure. no, we have it on video. <laughs> Every time you, <laughs> yeah, you said about three whole words the whole time. <laughs> Terrible. But um, that is, um, that was a moment. Those are moments of my boyhood, you know, um, all of these places are um, held up as um, meccas, kind of, sort of. And to be there and, and representing um, just every, everybody being together, um, straight, gay, white, black, Muslim, your faith, it, economic, you know, from millionaires to um, people who had to help, have help getting on the tour with us. Everybody was on that tour. Everybody was represented on that tour. That is what was so wonderful about it. And I think that is what um, made it so holy to all of us, whether we uh, say holy or use the word holy, but it made it feel that way to all of us. And so that moment was pivotal and I still haven't fully unpacked the tour. I agree. Um, I, I really need to, I think I need to almost go get, um, uh, talk to somebody about unpacking the tour, you know, professional, because it was uh, so much, so much that went on because you have the intersectionality of black and white, uh, gay and straight, uh, affluent and poor, affluent and poor, gay and affluent, oh, there were so many... <laughs> It was so many things happening that, but they all worked so well, and um, that's why I tell people all the time. If uh, I, I use I use OIGC, if the world could just be a little more like OIGC, you know, we it'd be a one hundred percent better place. Um, but to be there and singing, be singing um, those freedom songs on that bridge, um, and that changed my life for me to be there on that bridge, singing with all these different people. It, it's like it was a moment of uh, Dr. King's dream coming true. Yeah. yeah. Forward to today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but at least I have that moment to dig into. Yeah. Right. I have that moment to reference. So I don't have maybe an anger as deep as somebody who's never had that kind of experience, who's never been out of their city even. There are people that I know that have never been out of Northern California, still live in the same projects that, they, that I lived in when we were boys together. And they see me, sometimes they see me as a little weird, but it's okay, I am. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, it's... Um, that that changes your perspective. I I know that everybody's not bad. I, I I have a deep trust for a lot of people that are not of my race, of my faith. Um, I have a deep, but there are some people who do not have that experience at, at all. Every person of another race has been in a position of authority over them their whole life. Yeah. So, so it's this, you know, it changes, it changes your perspective um, greatly. So it was life changing for us. Uh, it changed the, the, the organization and, and me and individuals. When you all said, we want to go, we had this mission tour to the South and you freely of your own free will said, <laughs> We want to do this and we want to pay our own way and we want to go on the buses with you and we want to be by your side. That was an, an incredible moment for us. 
I want to look at, I want to go back and look at today a little bit more. You know, we're, we are taught, we adult people, um, we're taught to remember. We're also taught to revere. And that's what, what we did on the bridge and to tell the stories, tell the stories. And I go fast forward and I wonder for my grandchildren and your grandchildren, what are the stories that are kind of come out of this? Uh, there is the story that we had, um, we had a fire ready to go because of the pandemic. I mean, you stay inside and you have no job and you have nothing to eat, then you have nothing to lose. There's no question that that has exacerbated this explosion. But are we going to remember that? And when, the, 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 part, of the part of the question, and this is a hard one, not really for you, um, the tipping point. We've had tipping points. Oh boy, have we had tipping points when we think surely this is the one that will turn the world or at least our world and they just keep not being. Two weeks later we forgot and that wasn't it. So all of this time together, uh, what do you say to your people tonight? What does your preacher say to you? Give me, give me that, that sort of big picture. Be part of the movement but be part of the movement in a sensible way, in a safe way, and a nonviolent way. We want to we wanna respect the things that helped us break through Jim Crow and all of that, which worked, which was peaceful coming together in mass numbers. Not this craziness, but there is a difference. And um, the people that are prost- protesting and standing are a lot of young white people. Um, the, the group looks different now, you know, and so um, young people are not having it. So that's really where a lot of this is coming from. If you look at the protesters, they're a lot younger. Well, well I mean, Martin Luther King was young when he protested, so, but they're, when he, um, they're a lot younger than most of us, and they are not having it. They're um, black, brown, yellow, red, purple, rainbow, everybody together is protesting the peaceful ones. Now, the anarchy stuff that's happening is a whole different, there are whole different groups of people. There are the, the instigators, there are the white supremacists who are setting stuff off to make um, the distraction bigger. And, you know, if you, if you show a bull red, it's going to, it's going to run at you. So they're, they, they know what they're doing. They are perfectly poised to get the people riled up more and to go into the looting mode and all of that stuff. But the, most of the protesters are peaceful people, and it's a beautiful thing. When you look at the protesters, the crowds are just who you would want them to be. And it's beautiful, and um, they're standing strong. Um, I think it would be five times as many people it, if it wasn't during a corona situation, because I'd be out there if it wasn't for corona. But, you know, we, those of us who are 43, <laughs> have, to stay in, have to stay in the house. <laughs> I feel like I just became the oldest one in the group. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you know, to, to sort of piggyback on what you're saying, Terrence, um, you know, it, it's a, a sort of just looking back at history. And I don't mean recent history. I mean, looking back, right, hundreds of years ago um, and, and finding the words of Ben Franklin, who said justice will not be served until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are. And that is, you know, when you see you know, uh, a predominance of young white people out there or in front, you know, and being as outraged. And as you said, I think you're right. There would be hundreds, thousands more were not for Corona. Um, But but now is, you know, it is that tipping point question, Tim, which you which you brought up. You took the you took the words right out of my head. Is this that tipping point? How do we make it that tipping point? Right. Maybe it is just isn't asking, well, is this the tipping point? You know, we have to create that point. And I think we have gotten to a critical mass where we will say no more. Yeah. No more. Yeah. And, and, and it has to come from all of us. 
And, right. Um, and, you know, up until now, my protest has always been singing, but, you know, I've been telling myself now my protest has to go a little bit further than singing. And what that uh, what that's looking like, I'm not sure yet, um, because, you know, we do want to stay safe. But I know that um, we're we're putting together some stuff in OIGC to put out and um, we're doing the best we can during this corona situation. Otherwise, we'd be in the city hall plaza singing and, you yeah. know. Yeah, so would we. And uh, I, we've had those examples throughout both the, uh, the civil rights movement and the LGBTQ movement of activists, and then those that used our art and our music, and both of them went hand in hand. And we're getting also to the point of like, this is amazing what we do. We, gotta, we have to step out farther. I'm gonna ask you a, a really awesome question. We've, we've been on the radio, we were on Michael Krasny's forum when this question came up and you said, you know, I got the double whammy. I'm a black man and I'm gay. And we, uh, we shy away. We do shy away from any comparison of our equality movement to that of civil rights. They are the same. They intersect here, mm -hmm. but not here in the big picture they're they're not to be compared so can you talk to me about what's it like to have the double whammy um well it gets better every year um but you know um being black and gay um has been it's i you know well somebody asked me once what if your son came to you and told you he was gay i said i would wear black for six months, I would wear poor ashes on my head. I would gnash my teeth. I would cry. I would wail. And it was like, why would you do all of that? I was like, because it's tough. It's tough. It's tough enough just to be black. <laughs> that's a minority. Then you add gay on top of it. That's another minority. And we talked about those intersectionalities um, on the tour a little bit, you know, how there's prejudice within the gay community. On, on several different, you know, levels, prejudice against people of color, prejudice, um, um, economic, and, um, and prejudice, um, beauty, beauty prejudice. <laughs> and so there's, um, but in the, in the black community, you know, it's getting a lot better. And I'm, I'm so thankful for education and I'm so thankful for the, the struggles that people like SMGMC have made um, uh, towards uh, freedom of all people, you know, freedom of every sexuality um, that, want, that, uh, that, that there is, and let people just be who they are, you know, um, because when I was young, little black boys that told their parents, well, a, a large portion of them, they told their parents they were gay, they got put out. They still do. I, well, not as not not as bad. I mean, I mean, almost everybody back in my day. <laughs> but, but now, you know, they're you know, they still do. But it's um, it's it's a lot better. It, it has there's been a lot of growth, and um, so um, that same conversation might change now. Today is if my grandson came to me and told me he was gay, I'd be like, well, well, let's. Come on, let me talk to you. But, you know, um, 20 years ago when they asked me that question about my son, that was the response because I knew, I knew what he was going to have to go through. Right. Well, you now, now it'd be like, well, let's go to the pride parades this weekend. And, you know, and we got the float. Um, <laughs> will you tell me when you, so the, tell me a story about when you came out. Well, did I just out you today on this, on this podcast? <laughs> there wasn't, there wasn't an out moment. There, it, really? there wasn't an out moment. It was just, you know, for years I lived who I was, I was who I was. And I just kept my business, my business. And, you know, people thought what they thought. And, you know, if anybody had the nerve to ask me, I'd tell them. <laughs> but, you know, um, so just um, one day it became apparent. Um, Did your, are your parents still alive? No. Did they know? 
I'm not sure. No, my mother knew. Mothers always knew. <laughs> <laughs> She didn't talk to me about it, but I'm sure my mother knew. My father, um, he may have known in the later in the later years of his life, but I don't think he cared. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, my my dad was like, if you know, he was just cool. He was cool with everybody anyway. So at some point, he probably went, well, if he wants to talk to me about it, I'll talk to him. Otherwise, it's not bothering me. And he was a musician. Uh huh. Which helps. Yes, definitely. We think. Uh, and tell us about your partner. Being the older me, I totally now see how I could have been safe to just talk to both of my parents. But because of some of my friends' struggles, I just couldn't. I was like, and so I guess if, if the outing came, it came a, a few years ago uh, when I had serious conversations with my sisters. But, you know, I was living with my partner, Autry, by the end. So, you know, you'd have to kind of be just not not as not as hip as my sisters are to miss it <laughs> right right in oakland california of course so tell us about your partner his name is Autry. he's great i'm an old lecherous dog what can i say he's uh <laughs> he's 35 um he's well, 43 43 and 35 it's close exactly. but you know a lot older you know um he's um he works in um fashion industry he's a beautiful person inside and out um keeps me grounded um but we have a lot of fun and um uh yeah we have a lot of fun and um he he is the unmusical part of our house which is great you know and but but a great appreciator he comes to everything and you know he has his notes when we get when we get back in the car. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. That's good. That's <laughs> yeah. I wanna I, I wanna take a moment and go back to something that Tim, oh. <laughs> I wanna take a moment and go back to something that uh, that Tim said. You know when you all agreed to come on the Lavender Pen tour with us, I as as we were as just now chatting about it, I had that Jerry Maguire moment in my head. Um, where 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 she says uh, uh, you can, where he says sorry where he says you complete me, and I literally like that was the sense of OIGC coming with SFGMC. Uh, you completed us. I I just couldn't imagine that tour without OIGC. Um, and and I think you know those of us who are you know those of us who who are lucky enough you know the the singers. Uh, from both choruses in the documentary, um, you know, we're able to watch it and we're able to go down rabbit holes, right? Like there'll be a moment, you know, and I'm like, oh, I remember what happened just before that with Terrence, or I remember what happened with Tim, or I remember what happened with Valeria, you know, and that's a, uh, that's incredibly special. I mean, it's in it. So I, I, you know, I, I, obviously we're all thrilled that the world gets to experience a little bit of what that tour was and the impact that it has. Um, and then we get to see it and go so much deeper sometimes with it. Um, and, and, you know, just bring, you know, talking about the, the Edmund Pettus Bridge moment, you know, it was really... Uh, do you want to um, give a little commercial uh, for OIGC? And I, I want you to feel free to do that, Terrence. Um, but you have two documentaries or three of your own? Two. We have two documentary, documentaries. I can't even remember the name of the first one at the moment, mm, senior moment. Um, but um, our One Voice um, documentary is um, it's a beautiful story of the choir, 33 years of the choir, um, providing song service to the world through Oakland. And um, it shows pictures of how the choir got start, started as out of a jazz camp. People wanted to sing gospel music, but couldn't be black and didn't want to be Christian. And um, they wanted a way to do it though, because gospel speaks to people. And um, so we started um, the third, 33, 35 years ago, the gospel choir for people who were not in a black church or a not Christian faith. And I love, I, I love what you just said, who couldn't be black, and didn't want to be Christian. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna be the tagline our interview. <laughs> that is well, it's so me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you, oh my gosh. Terrence, 
you, you, uh, uh, I spoke with your executive director, Moore, and she's a good friend of all of ours. And, and mm -hmm. I know that um, you signed a great deal uh, regarding the documentary so that, so that we can actually see it, right? Tell us about yeah. that. Um, a One Voice documentary will be showing on PBS. It's shown twice already. Um, it's going to be shown on LA soon. It's going to be shown around the country. And as it is shown, I'll definitely um, let uh, SFGMC know what the dates are so you guys can join us in the watch parties because hopefully most of the times they'll show it, we'll have a watch party. Um, right. Because it's, it's, it's a great video um, that chronicles our journey. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now I have one. I have one final question, and that is going to really put you on the spot. And it is now. What's the date of the concert we're doing together? Oh, <laughs> what well, is it? Like my my good friend. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> So let's just say that every time Terrence and I get together, we talk about, okay, when are we doing this? When are we doing this? And we, and we will. Well, we should. When, when this is when, when we're all able to gather again and sing, that will be the celebration of community, you know, of, of compassion. And, and uh, that would be a wonderful message to send out, you know, not, not just to our community, our country, but to the world. Let's well, this is the perfect time for us to release release our preconceptions about um, what it means to be with one another. Um, and I, I will say the two choirs did that better than any any other two organizations I've ever seen. And I, I'm gonna say me and Tim have really done that as well as the leaders. Um, uh, I love you so much. Um, uh, I just love you and um, I trust you. And that's, um, that trust is everything. And um, yeah, that, that's, that trust is there and that's what's needed um, today, um, that, that more peop people have that kind of love and trust. So thank you, thank you so much. Love you too. We'll make music together again. We will. <laughs> thank you for being here today. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. And we just, um, you know, we just pray for you. And we pray for your, your people in the OIGC, our people. <laughs> and we just pray for a better day that we will, we will all accept and know what we've done and take our part in whatever we, we've helped along the way and fix that and do our best to just love each other. Well, we gotta, we gotta get some of the video stuff and just put it up in clips or something from the tour so that people can see beauty instead of what they're seeing right now. Because I tell you, one of the favorite things in my life since the tour is being in San Francisco. And I, as I'm walking to shop or doing whatever, I hear, hey, Tarts! <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least they used your name and didn't say, girl, what you doing? <laughs> oh, but it's, it's so awesome because now, I mean, I feel like I have family in San Francisco like I've never felt before. So it's so awesome to all the, all, all the folks in the choir. I love them. I love you guys madly. Chris, you are my, my fashion envy ever. And uh, <laughs> Really? I, You're I, saying this? Look at you. Are you I, <laughs> I, I, think that's, so I, think, I think we both share that with one another. So. Thank you so much. Beautiful. I love you guys. Thank you. Love you love too. You.